It's a process. It's a voluntary function by which love muscles expand and contract fat. The human body can't survive without oxygen. So natural, so basic, that so often are we conscious of our lungs pumping, our chest heaving, never needing to be reminded that we're alive today because we're still breathing, but lately, it seems I've had to be more aware of this intake in my chest. I had to manually manipulate the natural pattern in my breath. In times of pressure, in times of stress, sometimes the only solution I have left is to just breathe. Like when my alarm mysteriously malfunctions during the morning of an important meeting, breathe. Like when my cell phone decides to disconnect during an important conversation, breathe. Like when some asshole cuts me off in his BMW convertible, knowing for a fact that it's reckless bastards like that who make auto insurance in the state of Florida is that much more unaffordable. And the only job that this pimple faced kid at the drive thru has is to make sure that my whopper has no tomatoes. But now I'm plucking tomato particles out of my teeth and my bitter breathe. Like, like when the bank charges me a $30 overdraft fee because of a $2 purchase. But, but when I call customer service about this injustice, I have to repeat myself 10 times to a voice activated menu who won't even let you human being until it registers your account number correctly. Four motherfucker, I said four, three. Tax time and pregnancy test. Too many bills and not enough checks and all the other irritating situations that disturb your peace. Throw all the tantrums you want, get all the furniture you need, but when the dust settles, all you can do is just until the one day everything falls into perspective. Walking into my best friend's bedroom to find him seated on the floor by his wife's bedside. Waiting for the chance that she just might wake in the middle of the night whispering for a glass of water. And he'll get it for her, knowing she's too weak to get it herself in her type of condition. She lays in fetal position, cradles her bald head in complete submission, taking short breaths that cut the silence in the small incisions he listens closely. Entertains himself mostly by replaying the memories of days when her hair never ceases to grow. Using those memories now to fight off the need to know that that's what chemo does to you. Imagine him sitting, waiting for the time to pass, fingers feeling the stubble of his own bald head, which he purposely shaved that morning just to make her laugh, wishing now that he could pervert time and choose medicine instead of graphic design as a career path. But even that won't grant better answers, because with cancer, all you can do is remedy the symptoms and tend to her needs, then sit back in blind wisdom and just breathe. So precious, so full of life, that despite all of our trials, tribulations, and strife, I'm beginning to realize that nothing is more essential than the feeling of being alive. And struggle, that's just freedom waiting to unfold. And freedom is just the breath that refuses to go old. And the breath is just a soundtrack to the stories of life that need to be told. So to you I offer this life. To you I offer this peace. To you I offer the simple solace of oxygen being inhaled and released. Because anything worth happening happens between the inhale and the exhale. Between conception and death. And time fills the spaces between with the beat by which we tune our breath. Time is ticking, slipping faster than we can expect. So I can't afford any more time trying to define what comes next. I'm living now. I'm living today. I'm living as if the entire world is my stage. My God is watching, waiting on me to achieve. So I respond by holding my breath. The moment I step up to the mic to speak, and when my time is done, I return to my seat, knowing that with every breath, I live this life to its very best. And only then will I.